Salesforce picklist dependencies. We're gonna be talking through what a controlling field is versus a dependent field, how to actually set up picklist dependencies, and a few things to consider as you're looking at standard fields and custom fields. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here I am in a sandbox environment here, or a developer org actually, and I'm gonna be looking through setting up these picklist dependencies. Uh, so here uh, I have the object manager and I'm currently on the lead and I want to walk through how to create these pick list dependencies. So some a few things to consider is that as you have the object manager open, you can actually see if any fields are controlling fields. Now controlling fields versus dependent fields. Controlling fields are what allows you to select the dependent field. Think of the controlling field as the first layer of data and the dependent field as the second layer of data. So if you choose X, Y, Z, let's say you choose Y, you have certain dependent values that you can select from. So the controlling field here is gonna show you if any field that you have here is controlling and what potentially as you click in are dependent fields here. A few things to consider is that if you have a standard field, a standard field cannot be a dependent field. They can be controlling fields, as well as a custom field can also be a controlling field to a custom field that's the, their, that is their dependent field. So very important to note, I'll link a few help articles that talk about uh, what dependent fields can be, you know, checkbox, pick lists, et cetera. So in this case on the lead, this is gonna be the most common dependency fields that I see set up, which is actually gonna be the lead source and the lead source detail. And so I'm gonna go ahead and find these uh, fields here. So here we have the lead source, which is a standard field, which can be a controlling, but not a dependent field, and lead source detail, which is gonna be the dependent field. So if we click into here, into both, just to show you what those look like, you know, the lead source in my mind is just a high level, where did this lead come from, right? So here we have web, phone, referral, purchase list, or other, right? And so this isn't telling us a, a lot of data, but it's giving us those high level segmentation of where the lead's coming from. Whereas the lead source detail has quite a large list that goes through exactly where this came from. Right now, without setting up the dependencies, I'm gonna click in and show you what this looks like on a lead, right? So right now, if I were to jump into uh, any lead, as I select these fields, so for example, the lead source, which is right here, uh, let's say the lead source is gonna be web, right? You'll notice that the lead source detail, I have all of these items to select from. Now this is depend it doesn't matter what I have here, purchase list, uh, phone inquiry. You'll notice that there's this list of lead source detail. Now this could grow quite a bit uh, if you're looking at um, you know, different types of, of UTM parameters. You might have those in the lead source detail or another field. So this list can be quite exhaustive. You might have dozens and dozens of values here. So that's why dependencies are important, which I'll show you after we set up what this process looks like. So let's go ahead and jump in. Again, I want the lead source to be the first layer, which is gonna be the controlling field, which how I'm gonna set it up is whatever I choose as the lead source, the controlling field, it's gonna control what values are available in the lead source detail. Now, in order to set that up, I'm gonna do that here on the field and relationships piece of the object manager. And I'm gonna go straight here to field dependencies. As I click in here, you'll notice there's nothing here now. I'm gonna hit new. And now here's where I actually set up the controlling field and the dependent field. So in this case, I wanna have the lead source be that dependent field. So again, you'll notice that these fields, they're either gonna be pick lists or a checkbox, right? Those are the only types of fields that can be controlling fields. Um, as I mentioned, it can be either a standard or a custom field, but if you look at the dependent, only custom fields can be dependent fields, right? So in this case, I'm gonna have lead source as the controlling field, and I'm gonna have lead source detail as the dependent field. 
as I hit continue, this screen's gonna pop up, which is very important, right? This is gonna tell you what is available for each. So across the top, I have the lead source, which is the controlling field, which is gonna say, okay, if I have web selected on the lead source, what lead source detail values do I want to show up? And you'll notice here, this is the legend here. If it's, if it's uh, kind of grayed out, that's not a part of the, the list, so it's excluded. And if it's yellow, it's included. So in this case, I can actually click in, right? And go ahead and include values. And if I hit control on Windows, I can select multiple. So I'm gonna have Google as well as LinkedIn. I can double click them to add them in. Um, or as I do it, you know, I can go ahead and hit include values, right? Um, you can double click to select, double click to deselect. So on web, I wanna have Google in a LinkedIn form right? Uh, phone, uh, let's go ahead and put, uh, we'll go ahead and put outbound, sales phone, support phone. phone. Uh, referral, just gonna click on these that look like they're, they're referrals here. Uh, purchase list, uh, let's go ahead and put in uh, event list, podcast listeners, uh, Zoom info, and for other, um, I will put in outbound and let's say bad data. Um, and so what I wanna do here is, is again, these are the values that are gonna pop up as I hit the lead source. If I have the lead source web, only Google and LinkedIn form are going to show up. One thing that's important is that if you have a lot of values in the controlling field, you may have to tab over. Uh, I only have five, so I'm showing five columns, but sometimes you may have multiple and you may say, hey, where are some of my controlling fields values? So you might have to tab over. Uh, in this case, I just have this one single pane here. Now that I have this set up, a fun feature that you have in Salesforce is actually the preview. So I could actually hit preview here and see what this looks like. It's gonna pop up a little window right here. And so I'll go ahead and select uh, web and you'll notice that only Google and LinkedIn will pop up. Now if I select uh, referral, only those referral options that I selected will show up. So that's how it's gonna show on the actual record itself. Here I am on the lead record, and I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. So I have here the lead source. If I hit this as referral, you'll notice that the lead source detail is only gonna show broker referral, customer referral. Uh, same for purchase list, it's gonna show these items. Uh, and so that's what the, the value of these dependencies uh, are gonna help a lot with the experience of Salesforce, particularly when you have a lot of drop downs. Uh, what's important is that uh, there are obviously these, these restrictions as you're looking for data import wizard, et cetera. It's gonna look and make sure that the values you've selected correlate to the dependencies in the system. So you can't import you know, a purchase list that has something that's outside of the dependent values. So that's how you set up field dependencies in Salesforce. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions on this. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next time.